Hi there, I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone. This is your 10 a.m. update as we track Hurricane Ian in the Caribbean. This is September the 26th. This is your Monday forecast here as the storm continues to grow a bit stronger. Let's start with where it's at right now. It is currently still in the Caribbean. It's currently sitting near the Cayman Islands this morning, just missing the islands there. So that's some good news, of course, and moving to the west or the northwest at about 13 miles an hour. So it still has a northwest movement that's going to change at some point today as it moves more north. Now, just a quick little overview on what we're watching. You can see there it's got showers and storms firing nearly all the way around it. We've still got a void of that kind of on this south westerly side. So this thing is uh, trying to get an eye wall developed the entire way around. And once it does, which it probably will do later today, we will continue to see it rapidly intensify and the National Hurricane Center calling for this to become a major hurricane, maybe as soon as later today. So here is your 10 a.m. Central Time update or 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time update track. And this is the new track, the first one since early this morning. You can see there a cat one right now lifting to the north, maybe as strong as a category three by tonight into tomorrow morning as it passes over the western tip of Cuba and then into the Gulf it goes, continue its strengthening and the Hurricane Center still being a very aggressive with this, calling for a category four storm, maybe a strong cat four as it approaches the western side of Florida by Tuesday night into Wednesday. Now here's where the forecast gets tricky and where um, minor details are going to have huge implications on what the impacts are for areas like areas from Fort Myers to the north to Tampa to Tampa Bay and maybe even north of there. Notice as it gets closer to Tampa here, it's slowing down. That's one factor. Another factor, well, it may be a strong hurricane in the vicinity of Tampa as we go into Wednesday, into Wednesday night, and even into Thursday, notice the storm is still in the vicinity of the Tampa area, perhaps. So this is going to be a slow mover. That's going to only add to the storm surge threat, also the rainfall threat as well. And of course, if you get a category three or four and the eye wall closing in on any land, well, you're going to have huge wind problems. So that is the official track as of the 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time update there. Now, as I mentioned, uh, minor, minor details are going to determine uh, the exact impacts to, let's say, the Tampa Bay area. Now, this morning, you can see it's growing in size. It's going to continue to grow in size. That wind field will continue to expand as we go throughout the next several days or so, and especially as it begins that weakening trend as it approaches the coastline of Florida, that wind field will expand as well. So a lot of concerns with this one for Florida. Now what's steering it right now is still that upper level trough is starting to dig down. The cool fronts moving through areas of the northern Gulf Coast this morning and that trough has helped weaken the edge of this high pressure. So that's why it's riding northwest right now, but eventually it's going to start to ride more north and then eventually starts to take a more northeasterly turn more than likely as we get into the Wednesday Thursday time frame. Why is it slowing down? Well, as we get out in time here towards Thursday, look at this trough. Notice what it's doing. It's pulling away from Ian. So as that trough lifts away, the ridge will actually restrengthen maybe ahead of it. And that means steering currents and, and the currents in the atmosphere that are steering this are going to start to weaken. So it's not going to have as much movement to it. And also this does add uncertainty because a slower moving storm is much more prone to doing wobbles and more deviant um, uh, movement with it. So sometimes it can do things that aren't easily forecasted uh, with a slow moving storm. Now our models here, we've seen some slight adjustments to the west. You didn't really see that in the cone track just now, but uh, this is because, well, models have been detecting that the storm's a little bit stronger right now than what it was initially thinking, and a stronger storm right now would nudge a little bit further to the northwest. So we'll see what role that plays further on down the road. But in the near term, at least through tonight and tomorrow, this is going to pass over the western tip of Cuba. And then notice how they start to spread out as you get out in time here towards Florida. Some spanning all the way from Panama City to Fort Myers. Reason for that? Well, there's still um, unknowns on how this thing is going to turn and how much it's going to slow as it approaches the coast. So these are things that, well, you're to the point now in Florida where you've got to be doing preparations regardless of these nuances, but just know there still is some uncertainty with how this thing's going to play out. Our GFS and Euro models, these are our two big global models. They're agreeing what it's doing right now. The GFS, GFS and Euro going out in time through at least Wednesday agreeing, but here's where they start to diverge. The, the red is the GFS American model. Notice 
it's a little slower there and it stalls this thing near Tampa for there's Wednesday morning, there's Thursday morning, there's Friday morning. I mean, this thing could be in the vicinity of Tampa for days. The Euro, a little bit faster, but it's still slowing it down. And notice now they're both agreeing that maybe this thing parallels the coast. It gets close, but then it parallels the coast and moves up towards the Big Bend area. So that's a different trend we've seen with the European model this morning. Now, one of the biggest concerns is going to be for storm surge. Let's say Ian doesn't actually make landfall or that eye wall doesn't fully get into the coastal areas of Florida. There's still going to be significant impacts thanks to the wind and surge and the way this thing's going to orient itself. You're going to see some impressive surge totals in the areas of Tampa Bay. So when the storm is sitting about here, it's going to have wind wrapping around it, right? So that's going to be pushing in surge along the western coast of Florida. And if it stays off the coast for days, traveling to the north but just crawling, you're going to have a persistent onshore flow, pushing water into the coastal areas, pushing water into the bays. And you can see right now, this is the latest model guidance from the National Hurricane Center showing that uh, perhaps the highest totals, the highest surge is going to be closer to the Tampa area and even into Tampa Bay now calling for five to 10 feet of storm surge. I know they've called for mandatory evacuations for certain a certain zone in the Tampa area. So please heed these warnings in these uh, locations. Five to 10 feet of surge is significant. Five to eight a little further south as you get closer to the Fort Myers area, more like four to seven and then lower as you get down towards southern Florida into uh, the Key West area. So the further north you get, the further you get to the center of that hurricane where the winds are going to be stronger, that's where your surge is going to be higher. And some of this surge, these numbers could go up depending on the exact track. And keep in mind, these numbers could change around some. If the storm decides to lift a little further to the west out here, maybe not as high for the Fort Myers area. Whereas it gets a little bit closer, these numbers could go up. So you've got to be prepared for worst case scenario when you're dealing with water, when you're dealing with surge. Another big problem, a slow moving hurricane. It's going to dump a tremendous amount of rainfall and some guidance this morning is showing that some areas, especially from Orlando to the west, closer to the coast, maybe towards Tampa, you could be approaching 10 to maybe getting upwards of isolated 15 inches of rainfall over the span of a couple of days as Ian slowly skirts the coast there. Now, hopefully the core and the heaviest of the rain where you see this little bullseye of maybe 20 inches stays in the Gulf of Mexico, but that solely depends on the track. If Ian decides to take a little jog to the east here, well, then you've got even bigger problems with rainfall into Florida. That coupled with the storm surge flooding. So those are your two components of flooding that Ian is going to be uh, watched for. Now, the other thing are the winds. Of course, anytime you have a category three or four, the winds are a growing concern. Power outages, things like that, damage. And uh, the key part with this will be how close does that eye wall get? Now, right now, notice the the storm will continue to strengthen, start to produce hurricane force winds as it nears Cuba later tonight. There it is tomorrow to tomorrow afternoon in the Gulf, continuing to strengthen. This model uh, specifically takes it a bit too close for comfort into Tampa. And this is still possible. And this would bring part of the eye wall into the coastal areas right there on the western coast of Florida. So you're talking winds could approach over 100 miles an hour if the eye wall itself gets close to land. Now, at the same time, Focus on the size of that purple area. Do you see how it grows in size? That means the wind field of the storm is likely going to grow and that will help enhance the surge potential as well. So that's another factor is that wind field growing in size and adding into the surge potential. But of course, um, if, uh, you know, if that eye wall skirts the Tampa area, well, then you've got big wind problems as well. And then there it is slowing down and then weakening, still producing surge, but weakening the winds, that would be a good trend as we get into the end of the work week as it makes landfall maybe around the Big Bend area. So when you look at Ian, it's in a very, very good environment right now. The water temperatures, these are the hottest and deepest hottest water temperatures in the entire Atlantic Basin. You're talking in the Northwest Caribbean, you know, the Cayman Islands where you see that deep color. There's plenty of fuel for this thing. Right now its structure is coming together and as soon as that structure comes together, this thing will likely rapidly intensify. It also just doesn't have a lot of wind shear right now. That will change though as we go out in time. So no wind shear really right now. 
It's got a lot of moisture surrounding it. It's got hot sea surface temperatures. Those are the three boxes you need to check to get a really intense cyclone. Now, as we get out towards around Wednesday, notice what happens. You still got, you got this north or this south southerly flow north of it. That's helping pull it north. But as it gets closer to those winds, the, the, um, the wind shear is going to start to increase. Also at the same time, a cool front has just moved into the Gulf of Mexico and there's northwest flow over the Gulf of Mexico right in here. That is going to pull a large amount of dry air into the Gulf and eventually, this is why we have it weakening, that dry air, hopefully, this will be a good thing, dry air gets pulled up into Ian. As it starts to slow down, it's got plenty of time to start to wrap into that that dry air, that wind shear kicks in, and that hopefully starts to weaken it. Now, that may not lessen the surge potential, but maybe that'll lessen the, the uh, damaging wind potential as it gets closer to making landfall there in the northern parts of the state. We're talking in the Big Bend right there. So that's one reason we think it might try to weaken. Hopefully, that is something that happens. Sometimes these robust hurricanes can sometimes fight off this wind shear, fight off this dry air, but it does look like a substantial amount of shear is eventually going to work on this thing, and there's going to be a big, a substantial amount of dry air in the western Gulf that will get pulled in. So that'll be one trend we we'll certainly keep an eye on. So the overall message, hopefully all those who do watch us in Florida, we're based in New Orleans, if you didn't know, um, hopefully you're getting the right information, your heating evacuation warnings, you're planning for the worst, hoping for the best. That's really what you can only do in these hurricanes because slight differences in these type of tracks here are gonna make a big difference in big impacts and maybe not as big of impacts, but you can't bet on that in some of these scenarios. I mean, some places could see upwards of 10 feet of stir surge in the Tampa Bay area. So certainly something to take uh, very seriously and of course, listen to those officials as they issue evacuation um, and things like that. The mandatory ones, if they're issuing mandatory evacuations, it's for the surge, it's for that life-threatening surge that comes up and it can come up quickly. So something to follow closely. Of course, we're gonna continue with many more updates over the following days as we track Ian, it's expected to be in the Gulf by late, late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and then that intensification should continue through at least Wednesday before it starts to approach the Florida coast. But that's gonna do it for your 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern time update for Hurricane Ian. Thanks for joining me.